Most of the shots I made today were staccato shots. And I experimented with trying to make a Faraday cage out of the uh, shimmy by Fellow. So in these shots, I'm still having an issue where the water comes through predominantly to one side, which is caused by the shower screen, or rather the water dispersion being slightly upsided, which causes issues in low flow profiles like this one. fun part is that I realized once the steam stops coming out, that happens right before the first few drops. So it's a good indicator of when to go to the next stage of the profile. So this shot looked a little bit better. All of these shots tasted pretty good and they were 18% extraction yield for a 1.4 to 1 output to input ratio. Even though it doesn't look too pretty right here. It still ended up pulling a pretty good shot. Each of these shots were also part of a coffee bean that was processed five or processed eight different ways. I have four, or sorry, if I have five of those processes. So I've been running shots to see how they compare over time uh, to each other and then I'm going to take a look at how they performed with these different processes. So it's a fun experimental set from Chromatic Coffee. I started the day with trying to make a Faraday cage with the um, shimmy. And in some recorded times, it didn't seem to help that much, but I'm still doing some testing. Then I pulled a two layer staccato shot with Robusta in this one. And the pour came out still lopsided. I've been tweaking the uh, pressure and temperature in the initial phase to try to get a uh, more even distribution spread. So I have to balance uh, putting in too much flow too quickly and it coming down. So the top of the puck looked okay. The bottom of the, this is the bottom of the puck of last night. The staccato puck still amazed me. Um, this is the inside, it's a smaller basket. So there's some spots it's not really working on. And then I decided to do a staccato shot of using my imprecision basket that I made. So the holes are not precise and they're very large, but I had some major channeling right here. It didn't recover. In fact, it just poked holes straight through the fines layer, which I discovered in the cup. As you can see in a second, I'll have a cup with a bunch of coffee grounds sprayed all over it sprayed coffee grounds uh, all over my machine. <laughs> and I had to do a little bit of work to filter some of those out before I drank the shot. I still drank it. Um, and then I took the same puck and I ran it through at a higher rate just for fun to see it explode. Um, it was kind of wild. But sometimes you just do something for fun. So I took that... Um, coffee and I tried to put it through a filter, an air press filter, but it was a little thick. So this is the end of the puck. It's kind of blown out a couple of holes. And for the rest of the day, I just pulled shots for fun. I started the day as usual with a Robusta shot of coffee. It's a Robusta bean I've been messing around with from Ecuador for the past month or two, trying to run some experiments, collecting a little bit of data. So this is just a single basket overpacked to 14 and a half grams. And I ended up with like an 18% extraction yield. And it's running over a cooling rock as well. So I'm cooling it very quickly. And after the shot, I've been 
drying the grounds to compare the um, extraction yield versus the measured extraction yield, which I've previously done with Arabica, but I wanted to check that it was the same effect with Robusta. So then this is a, a staccato shot, again with the experimental data set, or sorry, not experimental data set, it's experimental coffee processing set from Chromatic Coffee. Um, so it's still coming out one-sided. I started tweaking the profile to put in a, um, a, a pause that's different than a normal pause because it seems like the major channeling occurs when I slow the flow down after the initial flow. But I'm still working with uh, very low pressures. So there's a big channel in the middle. Um, so I'm still at a very low pressure. I'm not, I don't even get above two bars. And afterwards in the puck, there's a large chunk that's not extracted. Then I went to trying to sift with a single screen. So I started with 800 micron screen and I switched to 600 micron because 800 micron was sifting everything too fast. And so using a single screen, the first part that comes out should be finer than the second part and the third part based on what I found from sifting as usually when you sift with a single screen, the finer particles come out first. So as expected, this shot uh, does look like a regular sifted staccato shot and it had a similar extraction yield and taste profile as the time I, I sifted it with uh, two screens, like normal. Um, and it looked pretty good. And the sifting was a lot faster, so I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to make sifting faster and more accessible to more people. So that's the day. I started off the day looking at the spent puck from yesterday, which had this big area, which is carryover from the day before with the shower screen. I'm still affecting the, having the same issue. So I pulled my morning Robusta shot. This is a Robusta that was treated with humidity. Um, it's about a month old. So it pulled pretty nice, but I still want to tweak this profile. It's very dark. Uh, I pull, poured it over a cold stone and it was very delicious. I don't think Robusta is given enough credit for what it could be. So I keep pulling them every day and I'm doing some experiments with a bunch of Robusta to see how similar and how different the theory behind Robusta is relative to Arabica. Then I went into the office to move a coffee machine and lo and behold, I had a cup full of mold. It's my waste cup that I keep under there, but I haven't been back in a week and the coffee dried out and turned into a pile of mold. While it is definitely gross, I was very fascinated by how mold grows on coffee. I've had this experience a few times where I've left a cup of spent coffee or the seconds of a shot and it's grown some mold at the very end. So I packed up my machine, I was moving offices. So the first thing that has to go is my machine. And I also grabbed a grinder from another office uh, that wasn't being used. So, of course, I always travel safely, wear a seatbelt, use a car seat, you know, put them in a little cart, took them to, to my office, and they were the first things on my desk. So I didn't get a chance to pull a shot today from this machine, but I love, love Pavoni. I still need to dial on this grinder, which hasn't been used in almost three years, and it's kind of gross, but I've been cleaning it out. Eventually went home and made a single sieve staccato shot. I did th that for this shot and the next shot, which is interesting because it pulls with a similar extraction yield you know, as a regular staccato shot, but I can do the sifting in about two minutes versus five minutes. So it's, it's a faster sift time. However, the distributions have an overlap between the, the fine and the middle and the coarse because you're using the theory that when you sift coffee, the finer particles come out first. So roughly over the period of a, of a sift, you'll get finer than the mid particles and the coarser particles. 
So I was using a 600 micron screen, which is larger than most of the particles produced by the grinder. But we saw this one-sidedness, which also showed up in the puck, which is that dark area. And that's from the uh, partially the profile and partially the shower screen having an unevenness. So at the same time that I've been doing this, I've been tweaking the profile. Um, how can I, uh, after the initial pre-infusion, how can I ramp down slower? Um, I think one of the problems is when the flow goes too slowly, the flow uh, causes more side channeling. So I've been taking a look, like this shot was actually pretty bad. Uh, it had a 10% TDS and a 14% extraction yield. So it was really low uh, by my standards. I mean, it tasted okay, um, but it could be a lot better. And then I've been doing some wheeling and dealing with uh, bulk prices for my book. So if you know anyone who's interested in a bulk price for my book, I'm, I'm open to negotiation. So I, I've, I've sold a couple sets now in, in a bulk price and, and uh, hopefully uh, people enjoy the book. That's what I got. I started the day publishing an article about using an approach to better understand how coffee extracts and solubles move in a puck. Um, it's pretty cool. If you go to my medium, you can check it out. And then I started with my normal Robusta shot, which seemed a little weak today. I, I've been tweaking profiles and trying to figure out how to best move forward, but it takes a bit of time. So um, it was still a good shot. And this roast was from uh, over a month ago and I treated it with some humidity, which did better than uh, if I don't treat it with humidity. But it is not as good of a roast as the one I did where I added some moisture to the beans um, by freezing. Actually, it was I froze them and then I defrosted them. So I don't know if it was added moisture from just it absorbing the dew off it or not. So then I went into work and I've been having a a grinder there that I been working on and cleaning and I was trying to get it aligned and set up but unfortunately the power jack didn't work so I had to go to my hand grinder and pull two shots on La Pavoni which may or may not be sitting at my desk because that's how I do espresso at work and it pulled very nice I was surprised uh, I, I forgot how the lever machine, even at 115C for the boiler, it still flows fast until it like gets in a solidified layer. And then I'm able to do some uh, pressure pulsing, which ended up with a, a pretty high extraction shot. I think I was at 21% extraction yield on about like 14 or 15% TDS. Um, both these shots were about the same and they were just, they were lovely to drink. But I haven't brought my Kim Express to work just yet. And I know that performs a little bit better than Le Pavoni. I just moved offices, so I kind of want to get people warmed up to a coffee machine being there before I bring that one over because it's a bit bigger. Um, but I do like the ease of use and, and the basket size is nice and I really like the machine. I like using these old lever machines. It feels very much like a artisan way of pulling coffee. Even though this basket could use a little help, there's still some uh, slow spots as you can see. I went back home and I pulled a staccato shot using this one profile that I didn't understand what was going on with it. Um, until later, I, I figured out that my temperature was too low. So I removed the steam pre-infusion phase because I had a slow um, ramp to get up to my flow pressure. And that seemed to be doing uh, well enough without the steam pre-infusion. However, the steam pre-infusion phase was eight degrees higher in temperature. So um, for my uh, last shot of the day, I it was a regular shot, it was a smaller basket, but I used the uh, higher temperature. So as you can see, steam is really pumping through there. It's getting that steam pre-infusion effect. Um, it's still coming through pretty thick, 
Um, now the TDS on this ended up being 14%, but the extraction yield was only 19%. So it wasn't actually as good as La Pavoni, but this was the same coffee as I was using earlier in the day. Um, so this, I'm getting there with the decent espresso machine, but it's taking some time to, to really understand what's going on with the lever machines. So I just showed the shop profile here and the, the pressure is, is very low here. You know, I, I don't really get above uh, two bars. I don't even get close to two bars, which is interesting. And then someone sent me some data. So I've been looking at some top secret data. So that'll be fun. Have a good day. I made an early morning shot for my wife. And since the lights were down a bit, you could see the steam coming out from the high temperature. I just thought it was neat. I usually don't drink espresso until after I've woken up and after I've had breakfast because it makes me very anxious and I don't like it. So then I start the day with some anchovies. And so I've been pulling them out of some salt and I dried the salt to, to use later. So I started off with my standard Robusta shot. Um, this shot is starting to taste a little old and the coffee is um, over a month old. So I just wanted to see how it continues to change in terms of extraction, yield, and taste. But the profile is definitely doing better. And it's given me some ideas on how to move forward. I think with the single basket, it's a little bit easier because you have a smaller area to work with. So if, if, it, if it has a donut, it's kind of hard to sustain itself. I mean, there's a bunch of tiger stripes here, but I haven't found in my analysis, a correlation between that and good shots. And I started an experiment today with sifting to try to understand is, does a sifter cause particles to get finer or, you know, actually break up particles while you're sifting. And this was influenced by my uh, previous work on an agitator. So that'll be coming soon. And I went back to a staccato shot. Um, this is from these, the, the sifting experiment. Um, so I, I was just prepared with the, the grounds. What was strange about this is usually the mid layer is only like 20 or 30%. Why today it was like um, closer to 40% because I was uh, doing multiple uh, sifts of the um, coarser particles, which turns out that you're cutting off little bits of the particles. And I did some analysis to try to understand how it's affecting the shape of the particles itself. Um, then I did another staccato shot, this time normal, but it was a mix of two different processes of the same bean. So it was the control of this experimental set from chromatic coffee and the Oro one, which I don't remember, um, what it's from, but I had major channeling down the center. Um, I'm not exactly sure why that is, but I think the uh, time it takes to for the water to get to the bottom of the puck is too slow. Um, oftentimes that's when I end up with some capillary action that causes uh, major channeling uh, that mimics the uh, shower screen. So this is the profile. Again, you see that most of the, the Pressure was below nine bars. This was the, the puck. You see a big a brown spot on the side that it was a not going through. And then I ended the night with uh, another roast that's getting a little older. Um, and then I poured it over a cold stone, but I left it for a few minutes too long. And, and there's something different about it. It's not terrible. It's just not as good as it was was before. And there was even a little bit of uh, channeling in here. You could see there's a big, huge area that's um, not covered. Onward to day seven of this video blogging, which is my lazy way of throwing stuff together. Just taking everything I create and throw it in there. So this is a Robusta shot with a slight tweak in the profile to cause it to go a little faster. There's still a little side channeling on the one side, um, probably from the shower screen. So there's still some tweaking to be made. 
This next shot is a staccato shot. It's a blend of these two experimental beans because I've run out of the bags. So I have a couple left over, so I've just been mixing them together. And uh, this one came out a little bit better, but there's still a slowness on the right side that what's interesting about here is the flow is centered and then it starts to shift to the left side which is where the shower screen has a higher flow rate. Um, which is always interesting. I think it means I need to do some adjustments on the um, pause part of the profile because it's ending up at the center. It doesn't have much flow, liquid coming through. This is the puck afterwards. That one spot is really noticeable. I also got the coffee jack stand and tamper in the mail, so I'll get to try that out tomorrow. And here's the last shot of the day. I was in a rush running out the door. I just threw this in milk. I didn't even uh, distribute it. I shook it a little bit in a blind uh, shaker and then I tamped it. And um, it starts to look good at the beginning, but then the flow comes out too much on one side. Um, so I didn't, don't know what the extraction yield is, but the taste was really good in oat milk and ice tasted like chocolate. So, it happens sometimes.